Hi guys, if you are watching this video, there is a good chance that you want to learn more about the APIs of Marketplace Platform or Software One. This is beginner's guide. You don't need to have any technical expertise. And by watching this video, you will learn the basics and uh, should be able to start integrating with the systems, uh, both from the vendor and client side of our business network. But first, let's start with the business context as usual. Um, as you probably know by now, the Software One is a digital business network that connects our clients and vendors. Uh, and uh, if you want to learn more about this diagram and uh, our view on the supply chain, please watch uh, the Getting Started tutorial for our platform. What's important for us here is that uh, our platform essentially is a SaaS service itself that uh, has a public API that is used by our portals, by vendor portal and client portal. But when we look at uh, those uh, accounts of vendor and client, obviously it all comes down to users. Users that work with our platform. And sometimes those users work with our platform through UI. That's for sure uh, is the case. Uh, but the bigger that uh, client or vendor gets, the more likely they are to automate certain scenarios through systems of their own. Um, that's why uh, the second route for uh, communication with our platform is very common uh, through systems of either client or vendor. And those systems interface with the same public API of our platform, right? So uh, what are those, right? Uh, what are those systems that uh, our platform integrates with? Um, there are a lot of them. Ticketing systems, sometimes our clients uh, tend to automate procurement process through their own service now, for example, or Zendesk, uh, or Workday for that matter. It's uh, also ERP systems, sometimes the procurement process uh, is uh, maintained there. Uh, Connect-wise, uh, a lot of systems actually, Jira. And uh, all, of them, all of those are typically customized for the needs uh, of the specific enterprise. That's why an out-of-the-box integration is uh, rarely uh, applicable. Um, but uh, nevertheless, those integrations uh, need to be integrated with the public API of our platform. And uh, that those interfaces, those interactions uh, happen uh, through that API, which is the subject of our discussion today. So uh, Marketplace Platform API. Uh, we will discuss today the protocol, uh, the authentication, the query language that we use, and uh, a few other topics. I will try to make it quick. So let's start uh, with the protocol. We use REST uh, with the uh, resource query language uh, on top of that. Uh, the reason uh, for REST usage here is uh, quite obvious. This is the most commonly used uh, way of integration across enterprises today. And uh, REST stands for representational state transfer. If you don't know, there are a lot of materials about that on the internet. Uh, you can Google that, but the basics of that is that it follows certain standards and uh, conventions. Um, like uh, certain verbs, like get for retrieving data, post for uh, creation, put, delete, all of that. In terms of content type, uh, most of the uh, API calls in our platform use uh, JSON. Uh, there are cases when you need to upload uh, binary files, of course, but that's a rare outlier. Like as a general rule, it is application JSON. And uh, the API is structured around our objects map. And if you need to know the logical structure of our platform, please refer to the uh, Getting Started uh, tutorial of the platform. Uh, by watching that video, you will be able to understand the structure, the basics of it. And our API is structured around that. Uh, for every object in the platform, like agreement, uh, buyer, licensee, order or subscription, you will get a collection in our REST API to work with, like in this example. All of those collections uh, work exactly the same way. So if you know one, you will be able to work with any other. Like for example, to read the list of buyers or read the, read the list of licensees or agreements, you need to, to perform get on that collection. And the base URL for all of those collections is the same. It's our API endpoint slash public slash V1. V1 is our current version of the API. Um, the typical operations that you need to know for every object is ability to list those objects, which is the get on the top level collection, ability to create a new object, like place a new order, like 
by your Microsoft subscription uh, from your ticketing system per se. Um, get order information by identifier uh, and uh, modify uh, the object by identifier. Uh, all of them are universally applicable, uh, very simple to use, and uh, you should be able to just get them if you understand REST. Um, all of those API calls are actually documented, uh, so you can go to our documentation, find REST API, and uh, over there you will find uh, uh, all of those collections, API calls, and uh, payload examples. This brings us to the question of uh, authentication of our API endpoint. Let's get to that topic. So um, our platform uses token-based authentication. So speaking a technical language, you need to add authorization uh, header to the HTTP request uh, with better prefix and then the token value. As simple as that, all API requests need to be HTTPS. Um, other than that, uh, it's uh, super simple. Uh, how do you get a token in our platform? That's actually a super uh, simple. You go to the user interface of the platform, to your account, whether it's a client account, a vendor account. You go to the main navigation system. In the main navigation system, you need to go to the settings. And uh, in account settings, you go to API tokens collection. You go to API tokens, and this is where you can see all active API tokens that are in use for your account. And you can disable them or adjust them. Uh, you can, that, but to add a new one, you click add, right? You give your token a name. You can store any information in the description to simplify correlation of this token with the actual task. Um, you give uh, this token permissions uh, that are similar to permissions that your users get, basically the same idea. And uh, this is it, you click uh, create, and then you have your token value. So you need to take that value, copy paste it, and add it to the uh, HTTP request to the API. That's it. This should be enough for you to get started. Um, once you can actually perform calls to the uh, API, you need to know the basics of the query language that we're using. And uh, for our platform, we use uh, the resource query language, RQL. And uh, this is uh, the language that allows you to filter, sort, uh, paginate uh, data uh, of the API. And the basic operations that you can perform there are filtering, sorting, and all of that. So first of all, you can filter things, right? If you have a collection of something, let's say users in this example, or orders, you can filter by certain properties. Like for example, give me all users with this first name, or give me all uh, orders uh, for this product, or give me all subscriptions that are in this state, those kind of things. You can uh, sort things, right? Uh, give me all those users, uh, that uh, in status active uh, and order by first name, for example, or give me all subscriptions ordered by activation date. You can do pagination because when you work with our API, uh, we by default return only a certain subset of data. Uh, if you want to iterate through the collection of objects, then you need to apply limit and offset parameters. You can uh, also uh, perform projections and uh, add and remove uh, optional attributes to the payload for optimization purposes, for example. So you can, uh, for instance, uh, add representation of the linked object or property that is not included by default or remove the property if you don't need it uh, to optimize your script or routine task. You can also search by certain properties using uh, I like operator. Um, so give me all the users uh, with the first name that uh, follows this pattern. Of course, there is much more to that. Uh, there are way more operators than the ones I'm showing to you. The resource query language of our platform is documented. Uh, so what you need to do is to go to our public documentation and uh, to the resource query language, and you will find all the details uh, of uh, exact uh, operations that are supported. Uh, should be pretty simple uh, once you understand the basics. Then once you start building your integrations, uh, one very important topic will inevitably come uh, to like uh, come to you. And uh, it comes uh, at the moment you start integrating the workflows. Let's say 
uh, you are building an integration with the enterprise procurement system, say service now where this approval workflow is implemented. So you have a case uh, on the service now side, and then you're integrating it with the ordering workflow of the platform to automate uh, procurement of additional seats to Microsoft, for example. Um, this ultimately means that at a certain point you will need to correlate order with your case, right? Because somebody requested uh, additional seats, it was approved, and this needs to be converted to the order automatically. Um, obviously, you can build this correlation in a separate database, but uh, this is often quite uh, complicated and uh, time consuming. Uh, so, for that purpose, every object in our platform uh, provides a way to uh, correlate external identifiers. So essentially, uh, for every object in our platform, uh, you have a way to store extra identifiers that you can use to link to your systems uh, external to our platform. That uh, simplifies integration in many scenarios. And uh, using example of an order, uh, if you go to order details, by uh, clicking on that tab, you will see those uh, additional identifiers right there in the user interface. Uh, obviously, they're also available through API. And you can go and uh, edit uh, those attributes and basically set correlation with your, uh, with your systems uh, to simplify your integration scripts. Uh, another very important topic that might not be obvious, our system uh, is API first and it has been designed to be that way. What it technically means is that uh, our user interface uses exactly the same API as your scripts use. Um, so there's no difference, there's no special private API, so there's no, there's no other way to integrate with our platform, which means that you can actually look at uh, operations that our user interface performs uh, to learn, test, and actually copy paste. And um, our user interface is the best way to learn from my personal experience because it's the fastest way uh, to automate something. You can just uh, perform that operation manually, get the log of events and implement the same in your script. So uh, what it technically means is you can basically go to the portal and uh, if you know what operations you are automating, for example, order placement, right? If you want to automate provisioning of something, provisioning of seats or modification of subscription or a new subscription allocation, you can just uh, open up uh, developer uh, tools. You click, right click and you go inspect if you're using Chrome or use whatever development tools of your favorite browser. Then go to those developer tools. Then you just uh, look at the uh, fetch uh, requests and uh, then you go to the user interface, do whatever you need to do. You will have the log of events that uh, are being performed and you will see the payload. You will see what needs to be sent uh, to the server, what is the response, all of that. Super simple. And uh, last but not least, uh, if you want to see a real life example of, for example, exporting orders of your, from your account to Excel, uh, we've created a small sample in Python because for JavaScript, you can just go to the browser and see uh, everything that's happening there anyway. Uh, the second most popular language uh, in the world is Python. So in our GitHub account, uh, which is a software and platform, you can go there by following this link. You will find uh, a project called uh, API examples. And uh, if you go there, you will see an example uh, of orders expert. Basically, uh, the only thing you need to do is just get those scripts and uh, set the proper value of your token uh, by copy pasting it from token details that we were just discussed. And after that, uh, it only takes 100 lines of code to export all your orders uh, into Excel file. Uh, super simple, everyone who knows even the basics of scripting should be able to do it in minutes. Um, Hopefully, this will uh, help you to understand how to do those. And that's all. That's all uh, I wanted to discuss with you guys. Uh, I hope uh, it helps you to understand how to build integrations with our platform, what's possible. And uh, please, uh, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, uh, maybe a comment if you have any suggestions, and subscribe to our channel, please. Uh, this will incentivize us and uh, motivate us to build more videos for you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.